Okay, so what I'm going to do next, I'm going to hit the mode key and then I'm going to hit restore. That takes me back to the main page so that I can change to three axis mode. So I'm going to switch to three axis mode. It reminds me I'm going to erase that program. That's okay, so I push yes. And now I want to go uh, back to check system and then I'm going to open another program. So when I open this program, it's going to uh, ask me what kind of program I want to open and because it's a solid model, it has to end in X underscore T. And I'm just going to select one of these parts. So you'll see the part that I have here as I rotate it around. This is what it looks like. And we're going to use this top of the part to be the part we machine. So it's asking me whether I want a uh, surface that's perpendicular or parallel to Z. I'm going to go with perpendicular. So touch the top of that and say OK. Now it's asking me if I want to rotate the part any certain way to hold it while I'm machining. I'd like to hold it like that. So I'm going to say OK again. And now it's asking me if the highlighted surface is part zero in Z, and it is, so I'm going to hit OK a third time. So here you see it looks just like a DXF. It's asking me the same questions. What do I want to call my zeros? This time I'm just going to use B, the closest endpoint. So I'm going to select B, click somewhere down in this corner, and it's going to select that corner right there. Okay? So I hit continue. And now it's asking the same kind of questions. Do I want to inquire geometry or hide something or add something? I'm going to add a couple lines because I need to cut these two 45s at the top. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click on this intersection right there and just drag a little walk on move over there. Then I'm going to come up to this intersection right here, do the same thing. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So give myself a little lead in there, a little lead out over there. And I'm done with that part. So I hit continue. Ask me what I want to do first. So now what I'm going to do first is I'm going to drill these two holes. Okay, so I go to drill and then I select the first hole and the second hole. And then I'm going to go to event. And the difference here now is that I'm going to tell it I'm drilling these holes, right? And then when I want to set my Z depths, I can actually use the solid model for that. So I can say, hey, let's highlight this surface and let's use an offset and it's automatically going to put in what offset is set up in here, okay? Now just so you know, if I'm in the solid model, there's a place here that says set Z and that's where I pre-program what I want my dimensions to be and I've got my rapid set at 100. So I'm going to go in there and now I want to come down to the Z end. So for the depth of this hole, um, I could actually, if it was center drilling, I could just say I'm going minus 100. But to show you how the thing actually works, what I'm going to do is use a solid model and I'm going to pretend I'm already center drilled. And so you'll see that the holes actually come through to this pocket that's on the other side. So if I take that and just say with an offset, you're going to see that it knows it has to go 446 thousandths to get the tool to go 30 thousandths through the part. Okay, number of packs, I can probably do it in three. And then feed rate, let's say 10 inches a minute and use tool number, I guess it would be tool number one. Okay. So you'll see that I got those done. I hit the event button. It says, what do you want to do next? So I've got three pockets that I need to do. Okay, so I'm going to go to pocket and I'm not going to chain and I'm just going to click on these pockets. So here's one, here's two, here's three and go to event. And then in here for Z rapid, I'm going to go back to view model solid and I'm going to flip it over, touch the top side again, say with an offset, it's going to put in my hundred thousandths. Go back to my model here and I'm going to look at where I got to go. Well, all three of these holes go all the way through and they wouldn't really be pockets except that it'll be easier for me to wipe out the inside. So I'm just going to go all the way to the full surface. Say with an offset, it's going to know how deep to go right there. Okay. I'm going to put in my counterclockwise direction. Say to do it in five passes. I'm just going to plunge in. So I'm going to say number two to plunge into the hole. Use a finish cut of ten thousandths. And then put in my feed rates accordingly and tool number two. All right, you see they're all green. I've got three other parts left to do and I'm going to do them separately because they're not all the same. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to say that I got a profile to do. Okay, I don't want to chain and I want to go to this one right here. It's going to be missing. There we go and then go to the event button. Okay, so the same thing with my depths and stuff. My Z rapid, I go back to the model, flip the part back over, touch the top with an offset, go back to the model, 
touch the actual depth of what I'm trying to cut here. So I touch the top of that, say with no offset, it knows exactly how deep to go, that 336. It has the radius already in there. I'm going to climb mill with my tool to the left. I'm going to do it in two passes and leave a finish cut of 10 thousandths. And I'm gonna use the same feed rates, probably uh, give or take a little bit here. And tool number three, right? Hit my event key and now I got two other profiles to do. So I'm gonna say profile, no. I'm gonna select this one and this one. Go up to the event, come down to Z rapid. By now I know that that's just a hundred thousandths. For my Z end, I'm gonna go back to my model and I'm gonna click where the bottom of that small counter bore is, just like so. Say with no offset, it's gonna fill in the answer, it's 282. And then my direction again is going to be counterclockwise with the tool on the left. I can do it in one pass, same finish cut, same feed rates, same tool number. So that gives me my completed part, except for the outsides here, right? So I'm going to go back in here. I'm going to say profile. Yes, I want a chain. Start with the very first piece right there. Sorry, my mouse is a little goofy today. Right there, there, and there. And then I'm going to go up to my event, fill in the same information, point one, and go to the solid and get the bottom of the part, which is already right here. Say with an offset, and then tell it to a left, five passes, finish cut, feeds and speeds. All right, I got one more piece and I'll be completed. So profile, yes. Click on the first piece, middle piece, end piece, and then go to event. Same scenario, point one, go to the solid. It's already highlighted with an offset. Tool left, five passes, 10 thousandths finish cut, feeds and speeds, whoops. Sometimes you have to put them in, sometimes it does it for you and same tool number, which would be tool number three. Okay, so you'll notice in here, everything that I'm trying to do is green. So I can get out of the event, go to end solid. It'll say, am I sure? I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna switch over to my setup mode and go to my tool table. It remembers the tools I used last, which are fine for what I'm doing here. I've actually got a third tool to use as well. And uh, I'm going to just come over here and put that tool in there. And let's just say, uh, for sake of argument, that it's a 375 tool also, okay? And like so. And then I'm going to push return. I'm going to look at my tool path. And you'll see there's all the cutting that I have to do to the part. I'm going to push return again. Go to verify part. Go to define stock. And sometimes it tries to figure out your stock by itself. So I'm going to make some adjustments in here. My X minimum is zero and so is my Y minimum. And then the bottom of the part is actually uh, minus 900 thousandths. And the X maximum is two and a half. The Y maximum is two inches and the top of the part is Z zero. So sometimes it'll figure it by itself, but other times you may just need to go in here and tell a little more information. Go to verify part. And you can tell from right there that that's my completed part. So remember that even though the machine itself cannot show you the process to do part verify, the offline will show you. So there you can see there's my completed part from stock to finish. And I'm just gonna hit exit right here and tell it yes I do. And at this point I'm ready to go to the run mode and make parts. And that concludes how you actually use the two converters in the offline programming for the KMX. It's very inexpensive, very powerful, and keep in mind you could also use the SMX offline with these features as well, and they will work with the KMX as well. So that concludes how it works. I hope this has been beneficial to you. If you have any questions, look me up, ask some questions, and until then, I'll see you in the next movie. Remember, as always, to keep on tracking.